We're not just talking about women who are playing on the field. We're talking about the decision makers who are in the office, too. And right now we're joined by our guest, Melissa M. Proctor, the chief marketing officer for the Atlanta Hawks. She started her career as the first ball girl in the NBA. She credits her success to persistence, education, and not actually playing the sport she loves. Welcome, Melissa. But I have got to tell you, <laughs> I laughed reading your story because you never played basketball. Never played a day in my life. So how did you develop this interest? I know you were the first ball girl uh -huh. and that you used to go into Pat Riley's office and pick up his notes that he threw down. <laughs> you got to tell me how all of this came together. Well, it was really my mother, 100%. So when I was 15, I told her I wanted to become the first female coach in the NBA. That was my goal in life. And I just started watching basketball with one of my cousins in Miami. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, mom, my mom was like, OK, Mel, go get a job in the NBA. And she was a nurse. She didn't know what NBA stood for, had never watched a basketball game. That's and she mama. said, go do it. And she had left no alternative. Mama. And so I started writing letters to the Miami Heat. I would call 1-800 numbers, like white pages, wow. free email. <laughs> yes. And so I did everything I could to stand out. I would draw on the envelopes and really just try to call attention to myself. And ultimately, the equipment manager called me and said, um, I don't know what to do for you. We have ball boys. We don't have any girls here. Um, and I was like, well, I need to work there. I don't have any other option. Mm. Then he tried to discourage me. He said, you know, this is grunge work. You know, you come in early, you mop sweat, you fold towels. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't pay. Mm. And at that point, I was so invested. I was like, I don't care. And so he said, uh, if you call me one more time, I'm not going to hire you. And so I stopped <laughs> calling for about two weeks. And then I called him again. And then he said, you know what, girl, you got a lot of heart. You know, come in for a game. And it was the Miami Arena way back in the day. I had never been to a professional sporting event, never been to a basketball game. And that was my very first time. And they gave me a, an outfit and said, go rebound. I didn't know how to rebound. <laughs> but wait, you, you couldn't have been a ball boy, though. I was so. a ball girl, but they actually changed the term to team attendant. When oh. I started to be wow. really Come correct. on, trailblazer. Yes. And then the team owner's uh, son was a ball boy, but their daughter would sit on the sidelines every game with her parents because she was a girl. And so once I started, Kelly joined the team. So Kelly Harrison and I both were wow. first women on the court for the Heat. Ooh, that gives me chills because truly it is the small actions. And then that's really a big action. And of course, it all started with your passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And her mother's saying, go after it. That's it. That's so how did you go up through the ranks to become an NBA coach? Because you know, OK, like I, I, never coach. To me. I never coached. I never coached. Okay. Never coached. I wanted to be a coach, but I decided probably around college that coaching probably wasn't going to be the thing for me. And so I really started to learn more about basketball operations. So I would go in the back office during the summertime and learn about the draft and free agency and scouting and anything I could do to be around the game of basketball. Yeah. I was an artist as well, so I would went to college on an art scholarship but still had this art basketball thing going on. And so my senior year of college, I decided I was going to apply for an NBA management training program because I knew at that point I likely would never coach, but I still wanted to be a part of the NBA family. And so I applied for this program. I had Pat Riley and Alonzo Mourning write me letters of recommendation. Wow. So I knew it was my job. Yes. Like I had it yes. in the bag. And I did my interview, went well. And then I remember they called me and said, you know, you come highly recommended. We really enjoyed talking to you. Um, but we're business and you're too creative for us. What? We're going to deny you the opportunity to join this training program. And I was crushed. And I was like, well, this was, I was supposed to get a job in the NBA. This is yeah. what I need to do. And then like all college students, if you don't know what you're going to do, I was like, I'll just stay in school. Yeah. And so I <laughs> applied for a master's program in communications at Wake Forest. And I knew the dean. I knew everyone in the department really well. And they, I interviewed with them and they said, you know what, Melissa, we feel like you're using this as a crutch mm. and we believe you're destined for bigger and better things. We're not going to allow you entry into our master's program. Huh. And so that was another no. And I, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And then there was a woman named Beth Hutchins, who I love to this day, who was an assistant in the communications department and said, you know, Melissa, I got this, this application for this internship program. It says, send us your talent in a project. And that sounds a lot like you. So, you know, I wanted to hands. It's called T3, Turner Trainee Team at Turner Broadcast. Oh, hey. I didn't know what a Turner was. I'm from <laughs> Miami, Florida. But I was so intrigued by the brief. And so I ended up creating a TV guide magazine all about myself, my brand. And it was me as Cleopatra in a Turner Classic movie ad. It was me as a ball girl for an NBA on TNT ad. I made myself a Powerpuff girl and told them all about myself for a Cartoon Network ad. And ultimately, TNT Marketing said, you sold yourself 
well, to us, we think you would do an amazing job of selling our content to consumers. Mm. And that's how I got my first job and made my way to Atlanta. Oh, my gosh, Melissa, that is such an inspiring story. Not only, you know, how you grew in your career and evolved both personally and professionally, but just your story of resilience. And that's documented in your new book. So tell us about that and how folks can get a copy. Well, it's uh, my book called From Ball Girl to CMO. And I actually wrote it for my daughter uh, in 2020. And it was funny because I don't read a lot, you know, and I would do a lot of speeches about my story and people were like, you should write a book. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, and then one day I was thinking, I said, if anything ever happens to me, God forbid, my daughter won't know my story from mm -hmm. me. She'll have to hear about it through other people. So I said, let me put it down. I started doing a blog, unsuccessful. I started um, writing uh, in Word, trying to put together a book. Then I met an amazing woman named Renita Bryan who has a company called Mind Matters, and they, do, they help publish books. So I told her, and she said, you know, we'd love to help you. And so I worked with her, and was finally able, it took the pandemic to shut me down and stop me long enough to get it done. But it's been the most amazing thing ever since. Mm. Yeah, definitely a book that everyone should read from Ball Girl to CMO. Melissa Proctor, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm.